How's it going YouTube? Coming soon today with another video. And today, guys, the Brindy is going to be the most ban list accurate prediction that I can give you. Now, this is my most raw take. I hate the word wishlist so much because when you play this game so much, you realistically see exactly what needs to change for the game to be just as good as possible. And that's why you see a lot of lists end up being pretty close to what the actual ban list is because we all understand what we need to see hit. So things like Beatrice, things like Shifter, Protos, Flameburge, these are cards we'll probably see on the ban list because we all understand that there are issues in the game. But let's dip right into my ideas on what we're going to see here on this ban list here in about, what, like 14 hours? Usually it's about 12 o'clock, so we'll see exactly how it goes. But I really do think that this is going to be a list of all time so this is something where the ban list has taken so long that we really need to see something impactful here because we've already lost so much of our player base if you have watched some of the pictures that have come out of some of these events and heard some of the totals west virginia was like 82 players the ycs in sacramento less than a thousand players that's like a niagara falls regional or like even a niagara falls ycs you know like that's crazy because that's what they expect on those numbers in california though that's just insane and then west virginia being on the east coast usually gets a lot of business in there so seeing such a low number is really detrimental to our game I know I went to Indianapolis, we had 272, which was nine rounds, which was like fine, but like these Midwest regionals are usually 10 rounds. So seeing a less player count still is really crazy. And that's just because Snake Eye is just such an overpowering deck. But when I was at Indy, honestly, there was like 10 people playing Snake and the rest was any other deck you could think of. There was like 60% 10 pie there though. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of 10 pie. But, like, I played tier, we saw the uh, Millennium deck, like a pure Millennium deck, there was Adventure Synchron, there's, like, all these random decks that were there, because people are so tired of this format, and we'll talk about that and why that is. Now, one of the cards that needs to get banned is Shifter. I swear on everything, this card has to go. Lingering effects in this game all should get banned lancia dweller d barrier shifter ban them all these are just the most toxic thing i can think of if you cannot interact with them they should be gone i think it's perfectly fine if we have boss monsters like a rise heart i think is perfectly fine you can interact with that card in a thousand different ways you cannot interact with a shifter that is already resolved. Realistically, you need to see an out to deal with something like this, but at least you can dig to out like an Arise Heart or something, right? Which is very important. But Protos, a two-turn lingering floodgate, Calamity, a card that you just can't interact with, uh, the Sanctifier that drops a puppet on your board, there's just so many issues with the game right now, and I really do hope they get addressed tomorrow. That'd be so good. But we look at things like Beatrice, and I love Tier. I love playing Tier. I love being able to foolish anything I want. Beatrice is just Lavalval Chain. Beatrice is Lavalval Chain. Shout out to Brandon Dennis, who did bring this up. All they need to do is flip the effect on Beatrice. If you make it with a BA monster, you can send that turn. If you don't make it with a BA monster, you send it the next turn. And I think that's perfectly fine. Just errata the card and change the card text. Make it really playable in BA, but less playable in other things. That would be fantastic. Flame Burge. This card is Black Dragon. If Black Dragon is banned, why is Flame Burge legal? Arguably, Flame Burge, it's better than Block Dragon because it can reset things like IP. Do Oppo and IP need to be banned? Absolutely not. I believe in endboard pieces, and I think that you are absolutely lazy as hell if you don't want to play through an endboard and you're just like, I want to be able to activate my Regeki or my Dark Hole because I want to be able to break your board, and I don't want you to be able to do anything about it. That's insane to me. You're telling me that you just want full reign to go second, drop a Regeki, and call that GG. 
That sounds like the most in like uninteractive gameplay I've ever heard in my life. That is the dumbest thing that I've ever heard in my life. Stop using that argument. It's horrendous. Baron should be legal. Oppo should be legal. IP should be legal. Learn to play through an end board. I got second place at Indy because I broke a six interruption board. My opponent's end board was Emperor Charles. Emperor Charles? Charles... Uh, with the Angel Ring, the Gear Freed, uh, SP, and a Fenrir. Learn to break the board. Learn to break the board. Use your sideboard effectively. You play most of your games, two out of three games in a set are all sided. Your sideboard helps you. Learn to play through a board. It just makes you a better player. If you're telling me that you can't break a board of like Baron Savage in a back row, and you know that's the format, you're deck building wrong. I don't know what else to tell you. Like, I, I cannot stand this argument. It makes me blow up in my head every single time that someone's like, I don't want to play through this end board. It's horrible. You're lazy. Learn to break through it. It just makes you a better player. And if you're playing a really low power deck that can't, then that's your trade off. If you don't win the die roll, your deck sucks. And that's an inherent problem of many decks. And that's why we don't play many decks. If you can't go second with that deck, why are you playing the deck? You can play it for fun. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. But if you're not playing a strategy that can go first and second, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're entering a tournament on an uphill battle that you shouldn't even be in in the first place. If you want to win, you need to play the things that do win. I play tier in full snake format and i'm still doing well it's something where if you do want to play something that's off meta make sure you just hone it in for the meta and that's one thing that i say very dearly and i understand that the format can be kind of expensive but if you're going to play something off meta figure out how to make it work play through the boards make your own crazy end board i'm summoning winda i mean that's still a really toxic card that probably shouldn't be in the game but you have to find your own alt win con. If you're having a problem, figure it out. That's one of the things that makes Yu-Gi-Oh so crazy good. And it's one thing that we love about Yu-Gi-Oh. You have over 10,000 cards to choose from. Make it work. And if it doesn't work, find something else and make it work. You don't have to play the best deck to do well. We see other decks sneak in all the time. And I always say the scariest player in the room is one that understands how to play a rogue deck to the max potential. What did you do when you played against a Memento player for the first time and they just fully understood the deck? You're reading the cards like, this is unfortunate. I challenge myself sometimes and I go to events with things like Plunder because I play Plunder very well. And a lot of people don't understand Plunder and they get blindsided. So that's one thing where you can get that surprise factor. But please, 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 understand that playing through an end board is a skill expression and that's something where you need to be able to play your cards in the right order to really make sure that you can break that board and that's what makes Yu-Gi-Oh unique that's what makes Yu-Gi-Oh the best game on the planet for cards the ability to crack a board and kill your opponent directly after that is so cool and especially with hand traps being able to interact with your opponent on their turn this ain't pokemon you're not going your turn my turn your turn my turn that's boring that's why most of us go to pokemon and we come like immediately back because we don't like that that's not Yu-Gi-Oh gameplay that's not what we enjoy and if you want to play like really old your turn my turn you can play goat netizen that's great and sometime in the future, there's going to be a deck that releases that's going to be your type of deck. I waited forever. And then I found Tier after Striker. I've not been happier playing decks since. And I'm telling you right now, there's decks like Razul that are coming up later on in the year. That's going to be a pretty fun deck. And other ones that I'm sure will be coming out too. So just wait for your deck. I'm sure it'll be there. Now, beside that, there's cards that really need to be addressed. Things like Moon. It just came out as a common. This is a card that just needs to be hit. It being able to just access an engine. I think Fiendsmith would have been fine in that. If we just didn't have a way to be able to just like go into that engine. That's why cards like Camellia even for Striker can be kind of scary. Because if you're playing like not in today's age but like Striker Orcus. Can you imagine Striker Orcus if we had Camellia? 
like that's just crazy and that's what we're seeing now with moon so if you can put it in that context moon just needs to go because if you hard draw your fiends with cards you hard drew it in your five cards sure i don't have a problem with that and especially if like beatrice gets banned <laughs> sure you drew it it's a part of your hand it's no different than drawing the adventure engine it's something where if you get to it you get to it that's Yu-Gi-Oh. you have engines you have things that you can do with those engines should we have a free ticket with any two bodies to get to those engines absolutely not absolutely not that is not okay but the other thing too is cards like the puppet lock through sanctifier the calamity the protos lingering effects just don't have any place in this game at all and i'm just praying that they go they just make for the most non-games that's one thing in Yu-Gi-Oh that i don't want to see as a non-game who wants to watch a non-game it's just so boring like you're watching a twitch stream and you're like yep yep the only thing that I think was really cool, and it was cool for like 20 seconds, was the Earthbound release thing. That was really funny. I thought that was great. But if you're sitting across from it, and you're like, you know, like, that sucks. Just ban Beatrice. It's just Lavalval Chain. And all of us say you can't bring back Lavalval Chain. So why is Beatrice legal? People were like, well, Lavalval Chain's easier to summon because it's fours. Well, right now, sixes are easier to summon. So it basically takes place of the rank four. <laughs> so these are things that need to get addressed. Prosperity? This is a card that shouldn't be around. If you're struggling against a deck, especially, for example, right now, Shifter's legal. My only play is to make a baguska if your opponent shifters you and your only your only play is to just pray that your opponent does not draw the out and your opponent rips prosperity that's the end of the game that's the end of it you have no out your opponent just got in six cards they're out because they had pros if konami thought that your opponent shouldn't have desires and they threw it on the ban list they threw desires at one it's back now but if they felt that strongly about desires and you banish 10 out of your deck why is prosperity not on the ban list why is prosperity not on the ban list duality says you can't special summon look for three prosperity says your opponent loses look for six <laughs> Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Prosperity needs to be hit. This card is not okay. It is not okay. Now, as for the rest of the engine that we know as Snake, Wanted Poster, and Poplar, and even Ash to these things need to happen because of the new archetype coming out. I think it's uh, Azima, Azima. I know I have airlifter to three, and that's going to be really strong. I think that if you just go ahead and get rid of a lot of the snake cards and give your opponent back their airlifter, it has some kind of balance, and your opponent can at least play rescue again. And I think that's fine. I think having rescue as a deck, a lot of people genuinely enjoy playing rescue. That's fine. I'm all for having a really good environment in the game and having people play the decks they want to play. I don't think that rescue is overly annoying i think that it is annoying but i think that it's fine to have a back row deck in the format and it generates back row in a different way than we're used to you don't have to open all of it but you can still risk bricking on it it happens in this deck it's a problem but that's the trade-off you're playing so much back row but at the same time you still are playing a back row deck and i think that's unique i think that's very cool and i think that we're allowed to have a deck like that in the format so I think that these are the proper hits for that deck. But you got to balance out the rest of the format. Skill drain to one. Sure. I think the card has a lot of issues. But I think if all the other floodgates are at one, why not? I think summoning at one. People think playing against Tenpai is worse than playing against Runic Stun. To be honest, I don't disagree. Limit tip. Limit summoning. Limit gates. Yubel needs a hit. And for everyone saying, you can't hit my uh dark beckoning sacred beast deck <laughs> huh no one's playing that anyway like huh 
I think it's fine. I think this card says it has three effects on it, and it's perfectly fine to get hit. Because they don't want to hit any of the Bell stuff, but I do think that this is the card that just needs to be hit. It's one of the cards that allows you to recur a continuous... It allows you to have recursion from monsters out of your grave that are zero zero, so like Spirit and Samsara. It gives you an additional search. I think this is a card that needs to go. Uh, bring back the Party Boat. If you're afraid, just ban the Hand Loop card. Don't ban the Party Boat. Or limit the Hand Loop card. Like, that's fine. Like, Wind Up Hunter can get limited. That's fine. But, like, bring back the Party Boat. It's been in jail for, like, 12 years. Bring it back. I don't think it's even going to do anything, but bring it back. Also, Dryden and Barrage, for that matter, can go back. I don't care. Barrage can go to three. Dryden can go to three. Like, Zoo can exist. I don't think that it's, like, this crazy idea for decks like Try Zoo to exist. Or, like, a pure Zoo deck that I've seen a lot. Or, like, an Adventure Zoo deck. Or other decks that just genuinely need something extra on their end board. I think that's fine. I think you give value to Zeus. I think you give value to Typhon. I think you give value to a lot of cards that aren't really seeing a lot of play right now. And I think the zoo cards with Rat to 1, Broad Bull's banned. What are we worried about? What are we worried about? I know it's annoying when their last card is Barrage, but I can think of a lot scarier last cards. You negate Witch. You negate Bonfire. You negate OSS. They go normal summon Snake Eye Ash, and you're like, I hate this. I'm on two cards right now because I just negated several. And now I probably lose. Last card Barrage is summoned a Dryden. Who cares? Who cares? I don't. Sure. If they Zeus you, they're not killing you. You still have time. And if you're playing against a deck like this, don't commit everything to the board. Hold advantage. Hold three to four cards. They Zeus you. Are they ending on a Dryden too? Probably not, because they got to the Zeus off of the Dryden. You're going to kill them next turn. They're probably dead. I think that's fine. Because as long as you hold advantage, let's say you open, like, two Imperms and, like, another Hand Trap in combo, hold an Imperm. If you know you're playing in Zoo, hold an Imperm. If you have a starter and an imperm, you just imperm the Zeus in the next turn, put down your starter, play the game. I think that's perfectly fine. I know some people might disagree, but I think this is just another way that the game can be played. And it's also pretty easy to stop. If your opponent summons the next seed and you have a way to stop them from battling, sure. I think that's fine. And holding the imperm, that's one thing where it's like, if you know you're playing against this kind of a deck, right? There's no reason to completely spit out everything you have when you know this possibility, end of combo, Zeus. I think that's something that's just a ridiculous thought. Now, the other thing too is like, Sek is light, bring it back to three, who cares? I've seen some people be like, I care. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Why do you care about Sek is light to three? Why? It doesn't matter. It, literally, you cannot activate spells and traps for the rest of the turn, who cares? You can't even play super heavy. You can't activate scales. Who cares? Uh, Pink to three. Fenrir's at three. So Pink to three. That's fine. Lunalite Tiger. Red Rose. Armageddon Knight. Let them all go. I think Lunalite Tiger especially has just done enough time. I don't think that Lunalite's going to be like be all end all. But I would love to see some kind of Lunalite variant as some kind of rogue deck. Or even like a tier two deck. I think that'd be fun. Bring back X Seeds. You know, just really have a fun time with it. And, uh, I really like this archetype too. I think it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, one of the older variants of tier was actually like Luna tier. And I think that'd be really fun to reinvent and, uh, try out again. It does have some breaking issues, which is unfortunate, but I do think it'd be a lot of fun. Let me know what you think about the ban list down below in the comment section. I definitely missed interested to hear what you have to say. Tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow's the day. I'm gonna make a video on it immediately when it drops. But, you know, we're gonna see what happens. And I'm really interested to see how accurate we are. So come back to this video and let's see how accurate we were. I appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all later. Bye.